and welcome to a somewhat revealing edition of Ben's Junk. Uh, just probably not in the way you were hoping for. As in, no face reveal today, unless it's accidental or something. But anyway, I've been getting asked pretty much since day one about the stuff on the bookshelf behind me uh, during all the box segments. And uh, I figured, yeah, that would be a, a nice little detour to take. I've been doing an awful lot of tech stuff lately, and it'd just be nice to change things up. So this is totally informal, uh, just me and the camcorder, autofocus, auto exposure, nothing fancy at all. Lots of ramblings, lots of uhs on my part. But anyway, let's start with the stuff I get asked about the most. So, this is a toy safe. Uh, a lot of people seem to think it's some sort of robot figure, but it's not. And this was given to me by a friend, a childhood friend, way back in early grade school. And uh, we actually became bandmates for a while, years later. But uh, he gave this to me. I've had this for 25 years, maybe longer. And it's just a safe. Uh, people seem to think from a distance this looks like uh, eyes and then a nose and a mouth. But no, it's uh, tumblers for a safe. Uh, then you've got an eagle figure. And then down here you've got just a plastic screen which got cracked somewhere down the line. And I just use this thing for uh, pennies and loose change and stuff. And when I fill it up, I take it down to the bank and, you know, get my requisite $11 and blow it immediately. But uh, that's all it is. And uh, I'm not going to open this because this is, uh, one of the hinges is broken off. So if I do, the whole thing would come off. And indeed, the front section of this is also being held together with tape and stuff right now, so that would not be in my best interest to try and open this. And besides, why would I give you the code so you can get in and have my sweet, sweet, at the moment probably three and a half bucks worth of pennies? But aside from that, another bank sort of thing, although uh, this has no money in it, it really does work, it really is a slot machine, and you stick your money in there, although you can just pull the handle regardless. And if you hit three of a kind, it dispenses down here. Or if you're impatient, there's a little thing in here that you can press, and it'll let the money out. Or you can just stick your coins in the top here and uh, get your money out the back, and it's not subject to any of the rest of this. But it does work. And I usually just mess with it till I get uh, three of a kind by my own hand. I'll have to play with that again later. But anyway, moving on. Let me take a seat here. Let's start at the bottom and work our way up. So on the bottom shelf we've got my stash of Philips CDI and 3DO games. Just as labeled. Nothing special in there. And a lot of the equipment that I don't use that much, I have a habit of putting in garbage bags to try and minimize the dust and then just keeping them on the shelves. So at the bottom is the 8-track deck, then above that is the infamous DBX unit, and above that is the Vitacraft Vitamate, which I did a Ben's Drunk on. And uh, I use that occasionally if I've got a videotape or something that's really extra dark or muddy or something to try and uh, make it pop just a little more. Uh, I'm When I do use it at all, I'm very conservative with it. And then up here, uh, I get asked about my reading habits sometimes. And uh, uh, I'm not sure you can call these reading habits... Uh, we do have a few books that were uh, given to me. This uh, Bedtime Stories thing was handed down from my mom. And uh, as I think the little engine was as well. Uh, it's definitely older than I am. So I just kind of have those for sentimental reasons. But over here I've got a lot of my uh, music and audio stuff. Uh, the technique of orchestration. From when I was trying to teach myself how to maybe eventually become my own string quartet or something, which uh, I obviously never pulled off. 
And then we've got the ham radio books in here and uh, the VHS book from the Found Footage Fest, which, uh, uh, sorry guys, I couldn't resist this used copy because uh, of all the stickers and stuff that were on it. Uh, it was just too good and meta to pass up. But anyway, we've got a few old favorites in here, uh, some Capote, some Orwell, and then it gets a little more lurid, uh, even compared to Trubin Capote. Uh, we've got some kind of Hollywood stuff, Hollywood Babylon, which is 99% garbage. Um, the r book about the room and um, comedy silent film stuff that I've accrued over the years. Uh, this is Groucho Marx's book, Harold Lloyd's book, uh, Marion Davies, and then totally unrelated, Ed Wood and uh, a book on outsider music, and I love this book. Uh, Three Dog Nightmare, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, these are my magazines, old Hollywood magazines that I did a Ben's junk on already. My Leisure Suit Larry uh, coffee table book, Gloria Swanson. Uh, a punk rock oral biography, oral history thing that I've been reading on and off. Uh, Lenny Bruce. And uh, this book came to me from a viewer, and I have only made it through like a quarter of it. It's just so dry. I, I can't seem to... Uh, make it through. It's uh, very, very technical and uh, certainly beyond my grasp. And I even have a little overflow up on the top. Warren Zevon's biography, that kind of stuff. So, <clears throat> yeah, I, I don't know uh, if that's exactly good reading. Depends on your definition. And then we get a little more dangerous because I could go on about CDs and stuff all day. So, uh, let me just kind of try and pick out a few highlights here. Uh, let's see. This is a pretty recent thing for me. So, I found out several years ago now that a lot of the current issues of the Birds albums have been remixed and, uh, if not remixed, very heavily digitally scrubbed. And I have the greatest hits of the current issue, and it does. It doesn't sound right. It doesn't sound uh, quite original. So over the last few years, I've been trying to accrue all the early or original issues of uh, the CDs of those albums. And um, I finally did it. I got uh, a nice bank of uh, Amazon cards for Christmas this year, so I took the opportunity and... Uh, got good and specific with which issues I picked up. And uh, the only one that's not an old issue is this Reunion album, which is the current issue. Uh, we've got all my Todd Rundrens, uh, which I mostly picked up as a teenager. A few are more recent, uh, like uh, Healing I only picked up a few years ago. Had it on vinyl forever, but uh, only finally got around to the CD a few years ago. And uh, just... Kind of all sorts of stuff. Some more uh, rare stuff. Of course, it wouldn't be archived without a little Saturday Night Fever. Uh, Royal Guardsman, Snoopy vs. the Red Baron. Uh, Dick Hyman. That's one that... Uh, there was a bank of commercials that I found. A bunch of commercials. And I used some of them in one of my local commercial episodes. But one of them in that batch was for Target. Target uh, kind of quasi-department stores. And it had this tune that just drove me up the wall and I couldn't figure out what it was, but it turned out it was a, an album called uh, Moog, The Ele Eclectic Electrics by Dick Hyman. And so I had to pick that up. And uh, this is one of those two-on-one CD deals. Uh, the moon gas thing is just really overly stereotypical space-age bachelor pad music, and I, I don't really care for it that much. Uh, I've got Rascals kind of spread out. Uh, Bram Tchaikovsky, good luck finding that on CD. Lobo, same difference. Uh, on the Birds note, we got Gene Clark. And, um, let's see here. Buzzy Linhart, there's a name you don't uh, see too much anymore. I've had some of his stuff on vinyl, and I've just never... Uh, 
found much of it on CD or any of it on CD. So when I found that, I picked it up. Uh, Ian Gom of Brinsley Schwartz. This has the nastiest uh, indexing error I've ever heard on a CD. Uh, some of the songs, say you click to track five, you get there and you're already two seconds into the song because uh, they screwed up the indexing and so the next song starts on the previous track, if that makes sense. It's really awful. Um, so I actually had to burn the CD or rip it as a whole chunk and then re-index it myself. That was fun. Uh, for fans of Mad Magazine, I got this as a teenager back when I used to subscribe to Mad, and it was uh, also an America Online disc, but uh, it does have a few songs on it, and that's why I've held on to it. And uh, the one and only signed CD, kind of an infamous album, uh, the first Coven album, which uh, Jinx Dawson was actually nice enough to sign for me. So, yeah, that's kind of a, a cool one to have in the collection. And then uh, when you see any of these that aren't marked at all, those are things that I've burned uh, from vinyl or cassette. So these are the subsequent Coven albums that uh, I've burned from vinyl. Uh, the only King Crimson album that I have out in the open. Uh, yeah. So moving up, we've got a little sampling of mostly silent comedy, something I've been collecting for uh, quite some time, and some of the first Blu-rays I ever owned. Uh, this isn't silent, but uh, To Be to, or Not To Be with Jack Benny. Um, yeah, there isn't much to say about that. I, th I, I do have a couple more Criterions, but uh, I don't know. This just looks nice. I Part of me has always been tempted to move this elsewhere and just fill this out with CDs so it would be consistent, and I just never could do it because it's a nice uh, little change uh, visually. So, yeah, that never happened. And I've got my mini outsider music collection, uh, including Crispin Glover's one and only album. Uh, Florence Foster Jenkins, the one and only Jandek album I have, uh, a couple of CDs of song poems, and I have the Christmas installment of this one, but I keep all my holiday stuff separate. Uh, really, really old music, uh, stuff that is public domain now just by age that I use occasionally on archive, so stuff from the 1890s and the very early 20th century. Uh, Super Tramp. And, uh, yeah, the only cassette that I keep up in here, and uh, yeah, give a little shout out to my uh, buddy Weird Paul in case of fire throw this in. And I uh, burned that to CD when I got my most recent cassette deck. I used it as uh, an experiment to see how well it would come out, and uh, it, it turned out really nicely. Um, I figured I'd throw the most lo-fi thing I could at it and see how it would handle it. Uh, I got a lot of Ramones stuff, but this is the only one I keep out in the open, and, and that's just so I can have uh, a quick fix, because uh, really this uh, anthology rounds up, in my opinion, most of the good stuff. Uh, a lot of Graham Parker, some zombies up in there. Uh, Roy Buchanan, the 80s Giorgio Moroder uh, Metropolis soundtrack, which uh, I've never been a fan of the movie, but, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the soundtrack isn't bad for the most part. Uh, Roy Buchanan, one of my biggest influences as a guitar player when I uh, used to do that sort of stuff. Uh, and then everybody needs a little soft rock, so I got my Paul Davis in there and got some Stephen Bishop and my Redbone albums are in there and uh, more Rascals. Uh, these are Billboard Hits by Year compilations that I've owned on cassette over the years that I've just taken. Some of these, I've been able to jam three of them on a single CD, and that's just all these are. Uh, Eric Carmen got a ton of Elvis Costello, but uh, these are the ones that I mean the most to me and that I keep coming back to the most. Uh, Elvira compilations, those are good around Halloween. Or really any time. And uh, 
I've got, again, a lot of the stuff I have more of, but it's the stuff that's most important to me. So Tom Waits, I've said it before, I'm really more of a fan of, of his Barstool Philosopher stuff. But uh, I have more of his later stuff, but these two are the only ones that I've bothered to really keep out. Uh, Velvet Underground, uh, even the Elusive Squeeze. Got uh, some country rock stuff here, a lot of Poco, Michael Nesmith of the Monkees. Monkees is on the next shelf. Uh, Little Feet, uh, these are from vinyl on this unmarked one. And I have, I have this habit of when I get a boxed set, making copies of it, and or a copy of it, I should say, and then sticking it on the shelf in a regular hollowed out jewel case, and then keeping the big box hidden away, just so I can uh, have it handy instead of having to have a separate shelf and deal with those oversized things. Uh, Jerry Rafferty with and without Steeler's Wheel. I have Joe Egan's stuff as well, but it's not uh, out. And I know I've got a lot of prog nerds in my uh, fan base, so uh, there's your Genesis fix. And some Steve Hackett in there. Uh, more uh, 70s stuff, Looking Glass. The Cars, I've got most of their stuff. Uh, Men at Work, Chris Rhea, uh, more popular over in England. Never really got too popular here. Uh, I think he only had one hit here. Uh, Flying Burrito Brothers, Graham Parsons, that sort of stuff. Dire Straits, George Harrison, got a lot of uh, Beatles and Beatle-related stuff, but uh, for whatever reason, I just am kind of attached to George. Which is odd, given that I, if you asked me what my favorite solo Beatles stuff was, I'd probably say, uh, like, Lennon's Plastic Ono Band, but whatever. Uh, Moody Blues, some of that sort of stuff. Uh, Jules Shear, uh, this copy here, this Watchdog album, is stupid rare, and I just got lucky and found it at a hipster-used record store that didn't know what they had, and uh, I think it's worth, like, $100. I think I paid 8 or 9 for it, though. So, yeah, I love it when that happens. And the uh, same sort of thing happened with the Bram Tchaikovsky down there. All right, uh, now we're up to the top shelf, so we're finally getting down to the end here, and uh, I knew I was going to ramble quite a bit here. Uh, a lot of kind of miscellaneous... Um, Patty Smith group. Wouldn't be archived without Connie Francis. She's just too much a, a part of Archive. Uh, Leon Russell, Doobie Brothers, Kim Carnes, Dave Edmonds, got Nick Lowe and Brinsley Schwartz stuff elsewhere. Uh, Dwight Twilley, including the stuff that hasn't made it to CD. Uh, I'm not the world's biggest uh, Go-Go's fan. I like their stuff, but for whatever reason, I've kept these uh, Belinda Carlisle solo albums out. Uh, here's the regular ones. Uh, I suppose I could probably swap these out with something else at some point. Uh, Ricky Lee Jones. I have more Leonard Cohen. Uh, Peter Schilling. Yeah, it wouldn't be Archive Without Bread. Uh, it's so funny. I got uh, kind of attached to their stuff when I was working on my first 8-track uh, deck. I found a copy of this particular album, Baby I'm a Want You, and I was using it as a sacrificial thing, and I just had it in when I was working on the deck, and over time it just grew on me. And also, it's one of those records that uh, the hits and the album cuts are pretty different, too, so it has that going for it. Uh, if we got Go-Go's, we gotta have Bangles. Rachel Sweet as well. And, uh, yeah, I gotta have a little more requisite soft rock in there. Uh, Wendy Waldman, cult 70s singer-songwriter, Pure Prairie League, which uh, was one of the first concerts I ever went to. And this stuff here, uh, this is not Japanese music, they're just Japanese issues. Uh, this first one here is the Ronettes, and this next one uh, for our Australian viewers is uh, Billy Field, who was popular down there for a few years. Uh, Emmett Rhodes, solo and with the merry-go-round. Uh, a few more movies up here, and the one box set I actually do keep out in the open, the Martin Briley box, and I discussed this on the Favorite Albums uh, thing I did a while ago. Uh, more Silence. I don't think anybody would be too surprised at this stuff. 
Of course, I'm. I could just hear the complaints of God. Don't you listen to or watch anything from this century? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess these are all kind of connected here. Uh, Warren Zevon, who uh, wrote some of the songs, uh, like two or three for the Turtles, and the Turtles, their two lead singers became Flo and Eddie. So I guess there is a certain logic to that one. Uh, my Kate Bush stuff. I don't think anybody's too surprised by that. Uh, this one here is the live EP, which uh, I don't think has ever made it to CD. Uh, this is from a cassette. I have more Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, uh, but it's all on vinyl. Uh, Tom Lehrer, the only Tom Lehrer you'll ever need. And there's all the Monkees stuff. And uh, I have the regular albums, but not the reunion ones. Uh, I just haven't gotten around to those, and I haven't been too eager either. And then this is the one and only long box I've ever owned, uh, this Kenny Rogers in the first edition. And I just keep it out just, uh, it's kind of an archivism. I mean, uh, those things didn't really last, did they? Uh, then we get up here into Brinsley, Schwartz, and Nick Lowe, and I have more Nick Lowe. Uh, but uh, this is, the to me, the best of it. Uh... Uh, Alan Sherman, Hello Mudda, Hello Fada, that one. Andy Gibb, because uh, while well, I got Bee Gees, might as well have uh, Andy as well. And I've got uh, most, if not all, of the gold CDs, which I've discussed before, the Mobile Fidelities and stuff. Uh, my Pat Benatars, I have a lot more Ozzy than just this, but this is one's kind of special to me because it's not just my favorite of his, but uh, outside of Black Sabbath, but it's the uh, original issue. Uh, Mickey Newberry, cult singer-songwriter. More Kenny Rogers, which is only in here because it's kind of rare. Uh, I've got all my Steely Dan stuff. There's a whole bunch more CDs back in here. I probably just showed myself off there. And... Uh, yeah, I'm not going to take any of this out. That would just be suicide on my part. Uh, the Motels. I'm pretty sure this is a bootleg, this copy of Shock here. Uh, and then on a Genesis-related note, Mike Rutherford. Uh, not Mike and the Mechanics. And then up top here, this is a work in progress. This is um, my Commodore 64 and the data set up there. And uh, no, that's not my address. Uh... I'm working on getting together a uh, substitute for the data set. And so what I'm hoping to do, I'm, there's a case for it, and I need access to a working 3D printer. And the one at the library, uh, we have one at the library here, is not working right now. So uh, I'm not sure when I'm going to release this particular video. Uh, this might come out a little later or a little sooner, depending on how soon I can get this together. Uh, I'd like to have this come out near the same time as uh, another episode I'm working on as of the time I'm filming this, which is on, uh, like, uh, computer software on cassettes and uh, vinyl and stuff. Sort of novelty methods. So, yeah. That'll give you either something to look forward to or something to look back on, depending on when I get all this together. But anyway, yeah, I've talked for a good long time now. But there you go. That's probably more than you'll ever need to know about the big bookshelf. And that's it for today. I'll talk to you again soon.